Swallow growers know it's important to irrigate their crops. They might not realize uh, the options that they that do exist uh, to water their plants. So we're going to go over just a couple of those here. So first off, irrigation options. While there are many uh, options here to choose from, the goal is to efficiently deliver water to the plants. That's common for all of them. And the best fit may depend on the exact operation, whether it's field grown or indoor grown or container grown or what type of media you're using. You can see here the uh, athletic field here using pop-up sprinklers, kind of this overhead irrigation. This is the best for this operation. Others, we have hand watering against the version of overhead or drip irrigation are all options worth considering. So first off, hand watering. Uh, it's only good for small operations, and even in this situation, it's really not advised. It's a very time-consuming and not very efficient process. It should only be used to supplement other methods to compensate for potential dry spots. So it shouldn't be the main source. It should be kind of a supplement to one of the other main sources, simply because it's just so time-consuming and really not offering that much benefits uh, to the plants, especially in areas where you have a very even conditions. Overhead irrigation, outdoor applications only. Uh, would be advised for this. You don't want to use this in an indoor, especially running lights. It could be a very negative effect there. Uh, should still be used sparingly. The reason why overhead should be used sparingly is it wets the leaves and buds, and this is why it's not a good option. Uh, it can increase mold that could occur. Again, all bad things. You, if you must use it, uh, have it run it early in the morning when plants are typically covered in morning dew anyway. Uh, so you're not kind of re-wetting re -wetting the leaves. You're already kind of getting leaves in. Uh, flowers that might be wet already, you're kind of just re-wetting them. You're not running it um, at a time that you're kind of re-inducing more moisture than would be there normally. There's micro sprinklers. So these are kind of like an overhead, kind of hard to get the size orientation, but these are smaller. They're a specific type of that overhead irrigation, and they're best utilized to cover areas with low volumes of water. There's inverted for overhead, and there's vertical or pop-ups, as we see here, and they spin, so they act in a very similar manner to overhead irrigation. There's also fogging equipment. So typically this is not considered a source of irrigation. So I don't think you're using a fogger for irrigation. You're using that more for cooling because uh, it's producing literally this very, very fine mist. And we see in the outdoor operation here for kind of demonstration purposes, but they can be used in indoor operations. We see the lights hanging here, this aqua fog placed um, right in the grow facility. Water is applied, is intended for cooling or humidity regulation, not to hydrate the plants directly. So even though you are using water, uh, don't consider this as a form of irrigation. The goal is to wet the leaf surface, but not to the point of runoff, if we're looking at a true fogging system. Some people will say they're using the fogging system and kind of like overuse it and wet the leaves of the plants and get it to run off and kind of use it as a form of irrigation. If you're using a true fogging system, not very efficient for that purpose. Better for cooling and humidity regulation. Then there's drip irrigation. This is a very efficient way to deliver water and nutrients as the water will, one drip at a time, reach the plants. And we could see kind of this long run here of how that drip irrigation operates. This is a low volume, low pressure system. It does require an initial investment in all this material, but once invested, it can last for several years. It can also be easily automated with timers and fertilizer injectors. For cannabis, there's these uh, coming very popular, these irrigation rings. They're typically used as a modified drip irrigation system for uh, even watering of containers, and that could be fabric pots or plastic pots. It's specifically marketed for cannabis production because of the, typically the high demand of water for the plant and also the ability to cover each individual plant very efficiently. Keep in mind, if you are using containers, for indoor operations in particular, all containers need to have a way to catch the extra water, some sort of basin below them. These catch pans are simple drains necessary to prevent standing water from collecting and sitting in the bottom of the container. You need a way for that moisture to go to, or that water to go to, especially if you're flushing plants, um, and just a way to keep an eye on to make sure that you are getting a sufficient water in the chosen media that you're using. Lastly, if you are using storage tanks as part of your irrigation system, it's important to monitor and clean those tanks on a regular basis. Too often, if they're sitting in place, people just kind of fill them and use them. Um, they won't worry about, you know, any sort of contaminants, but especially if they're outdoors, they can build up algae potentially. If they're mobile, like this one and sealed, still keep an eye, look and inspect it to make sure there's nothing growing there you don't want. And it can be difficult to clean tanks that if they're used for gravity systems that are high on a tower, but still worth the extra t quick time to go check to make sure uh, they are clean so you don't ruin an entire crop due to a dirty tank because of the lack of the grower 
taking just a couple seconds to kind of monitor it. And if it is dirty, taking the time then to spend to clean that to make sure that the water they're irrigating their plants with is as clean, as pure as possible to reduce the chance of contamination.